with Read to Me, Mrs. C. Learning through reading is fun. Yippee! So let's open a book and we'll have an explore. The more that we read will mean you're learning more. Welcome back to Read to Me, Mrs. C. It is the holiday season and there are so many books to explore during the holiday season. I have another good one to read to you today. The name of the book is The Shortest Day, Celebrating the Winter Solstice. It is written by Wendy Pfeffer, illustrated by Jesse Reich. Now, I want you to pay close attention to these different traditions that people around the world used for the shortest day of the year. You're going to recognize that some of those traditions we follow in our holiday traditions in today's time. All right. So get comfy. We're getting started now. In late autumn, in the northern part of the world, squirrels hide nuts, foxes grow thick fur coats, and flocks of birds fly to warmer places. The sun rises later each morning and sets earlier each evening. Each day, it appears lower in the southern sky. As the sun gets lower and lower, the north gets less and less daylight. The air grows colder. Chickadees fluff their feathers to keep warm. Woodchucks hibernate in their burrows, and the white-tailed deer nuzzle through the snow to find the last blades of grass. On short winter days, children bundle in warm clothes and walk through a frosty white world, dragging long shadows behind them. On long winter nights, families eat dinner while it's dark outside. Children wonder when the days will get longer again so they can play outside after dinner, like they did in summer. In the north, on or around December 21st, the sun reaches its lowest point on the horizon, making that day the shortest day of the year. Like all days, December 21st has 24 hours, but it's called the shortest day because it has the fewest hours of daylight. The shortest day, called the winter solstice, is the beginning of winter. And in some places, winter means cold, nose-nipping weather. The earth tilts as it moves around the sun. When the northern part of the earth tilts away from the sun, the north gets less heat and light than the southern part. Long ago, people didn't understand how the earth tilts and moves around the sun. They didn't understand why each day had less sunshine than the day before. Some believed that evil spirits made the sun go away. People feared that the sun wouldn't shine on them anymore, making their world cold and dreary dark. They needed the sun's warmth and light. So did their plants, which they needed for food. They held ceremonies that lasted for weeks to persuade their gods to bring the sun back. Over the years, people noticed that after short days, 
the days got gradually longer. Joyous people bathed in the sun's warmth and light. They celebrated their harvests. About 5,000 years ago, people who studied the sky noticed that day after day, the sun set in different places on the western horizon. They discovered that when the sun set farthest south, that was the shortest day. These early astronomers planned to mark the shortest day. Then each year, people would know when the days would start getting longer again. Day when the sun reached its southernmost point on the horizon, the astronomers carried out their plan. Workers stacked stones to frame the setting sun. They made a special opening, like a keyhole or the eye of a needle. When the setting sun's rays beamed through that opening, people knew the shortest day was over. Days gradually got longer for the next six months. When the sun appeared farthest to the north, the rays shone through another keyhole. People knew it was the longest day of the year, the first day of summer. In China, over 3,000 years ago, astronomers measured shadows to determine the shortest day. The longest shadows appeared on the shortest day because the sun was at its lowest point in the sky. They knew that the sun appeared higher in the sky, the shadows would get shorter, and the days would get longer. Over 2,000 years ago, Romans celebrated the shortest day with festivals and merrymaking. They gave evergreen branches to friends as a sign of good luck. Evergreen wreaths were hung on the doors. Since these plants stayed green when others turned brown, they reminded the Romans of the coming spring. Mistletoe and holly hung in their homes because plants that survived the harsh winter were symbols of life. Many people believed these plants would bring strength to their families. About 1,000 years ago, Europeans celebrated the winter solstice. Druid priests of England and Ireland decorated oak trees with golden apples and candles to represent harvest and light. In Sweden, a festival of light celebrated the return of longer days. On St. Lucia's Day, Girls wore crowns of evergreen and candles to rekindle the sun's fire as they delivered warm buns to family and friends. Boys went from door to door, singing to the neighbors for a few coins. Around the same time in history, the Incas of Peru marked the shortest day with a festival in honor of the sun. At dawn, when the sun first appeared, shouts of happiness rang out. Then, the Incas used a shiny surface to reflect the sun rays onto fluffy, dry cotton. The sun heated the cotton and made it burst into flames. They carried the fire to their temples and kept it burning 
on the altars all year because it came from one of their gods, the sun. Today, people still celebrate at the beginning of winter by decorating their houses, lighting the darkness, gathering together, and exchanging gifts. They no longer worry that the sun will disappear forever. People know that days get colder when their part of the earth tilts away from the sun. They know that days get shorter when the sun appears lower in the sky. People celebrate the shortest day because longer days follow. Flocks of birds will return, seedling oak trees will sprout, and children can play outside after dinner. For more than 5,000 years, people have welcomed the winter solstice because it's a new beginning. Readers and listeners, did you notice some of the events or traditions that people in the past used to celebrate the winter solstice that we now use today? Think about some of them that are the same and tell somebody what you learned. Traditions are things that get carried down over time, and many of the traditions from around the world are still used and followed today. And until I see you again, please help me say it. Keep on reading.